Hey, you notice anything new? Yep, that's right. A green cutting mat. Now I can be just like AVE. Ah, you f skookum choocher. So, this is the time you've all been waiting for. This is the second automatic tool changer video. I have a bit of a problem. Some of the fits were a little bit closer than I thought they'd be. So, uh, this guy's not coming apart. Um, which is fine, because it works great. But, uh, for the sake of demonstration, I'll be putting the second tool turret together. This beautiful anodized part here is the housing. As you can see, it's a lot more detailed than the last housing. Got all kinds of features, and I'm actually also just noticing that the black anodizing makes it hard to film. Um, this guy was done a lot like the last one. I basically did the bore on the front here, and I bored all the way through. Uh, flipped it, did the bore on the back, top features, and then side features. The shaft, actually, I was lucky. Um, my work just got a brand new Okuma CNC lathe, and I'm super lucky because I got to learn how to use a bit of it. So, you know, where this part would have probably taken me a day to do, uh, the Okuma knocked it off in something like 30 seconds, which is pretty awesome. And it's also pretty darn accurate. Okay, so the first step in putting this together is putting the double angular contact bearing on the front. So this is actually slightly smaller than the last one. The last one is major overkill. This is only minor overkill, so that's better, I guess. Um, this goes in the front, really nice sliding fit. 608 skate bearing, you know, dime a dozen. Excellent. So the thread on the back here is actually M8 for a thin nut. So I can screw that on like that, push this all forward, and uh, this will seat itself when I, uh, when I tighten on the actual turret. So this is where we get to sort of the interesting part of how it works. Now I really do wish you could see this a bit better. Um, basically what it is, it's a slot cut in the side and slot cut in the front. Now this is cut this way. So the pawl on the ratchet and pawl mechanism fits in like this. Um, I'm not going to put a spring in just yet, but there's a little hole in there for a spring, way deep in the bottom there. So I just pop this in like this. I got some pins. I, I did something funny with the tolerance on the, uh, on the housing, so I had to actually step the pins, which was kind of annoying. These are made out of O1. I was planning on hardening them, but I didn't get around to it quite yet. Oh, and the Paul is 4140, so I'm hoping to harden it as well. We'll see how it goes. I just got a, uh, as you can probably see, a new induction heater, which has been loads of fun. Um, so the pin just fits in like this. Uh, the, last, uh, the last turret actually used a shoulder screw, which I'm starting to regret not using in this one. Uh, the idea behind this is that if something was wrong, something with the... Uh, say where the pawl contacts the, the ratchet, or if uh, I got one of the tolerances wrong or something, I could make this eccentric and adjust it a bit. I was also afraid of stacking up the tolerances incorrectly when I was doing the length and the diameters. So this is actually held in with two set screws, and the idea is I can just set the preload however I want. And um, so far that's been, that's been pretty awesome. So now that this is all in, I can put the cover on. Gone are the days of having a crappy little plastic cover. This is bent 5052 aluminum. Well, sorry, I had to cut you out for that one. That was particularly long. Didn't have the right sized Allen key, and then I got one, and I thought it was the right size, and it wasn't. You know, dropped everything. Didn't go well. Um, so that's the cover screwed on. Um, you can see I actually planned for this to be a 16th of an inch thick. Uh, I don't know what it is with me and sheet metal, but... That seems like a totally reasonable part for me to make, and it just did not go well with the sheet metal. I think I sheared two or three of them in half by bending them. Um, fun fact, though, with that, it turns out uh, the speed that you bend something at is actually quite important. It's called the strain rate. Basically, if the strain rate's too high, you're putting too much energy into it, and it gets brittle and breaks. Um, 5052 is a lot weaker alloy than 6061, so it's a lot easier to bend, actually. But even then, if you go too fast, you'll just break it in half. So, did this nice and slow. I managed to get two that look acceptable. Now I've just got to figure out something to do with the countersinks and it should be fine. Okay, 
So that is the internal workings of it. The next part of it is the top cover, which goes on here. Now, as you would expect, this actually covers the electronics and is a good access point to the um, set screw on the inside there. Um, there's actually a little cut in, uh, in the bottom of this cover here, and that's so the wires can actually get in. Uh, I want the stepper motor wires coming in nice and neat. Um, and then also there's other wires that come in too. So there's gonna be um, a power line, a ground line, um, and two data lines. So you think to yourself, you know, four wires, four wires, why didn't I just run these? Um, these are actually power carrying wires, so these these actually carry significant current to run the motor. I'd much rather have little digital wires going over my setup just in case, you know, it misses a pulse or something. It's not going to be totally catastrophic and skipping and stalling and all that. Um, and that's, that's just something I would do with stepper motors. I don't know. I might reconsider for a different kind of motor. Anyways, so... Fun fact, these little torque drivers you get with the inserts are the perfect fit for uh, M2.5 flatheads. <laughs> there you go, all covered up. This would normally have electronics in here. I still haven't gotten around to programming it yet. It's not really my favorite thing to do, so I'm sort of dragging my heels on it. I imagine I'll get around to it on some lazy Sunday eventually. Anyway, so now you can see the ratchet and pawl mechanism side by side. One thing about this design is I've actually got a spring plunger located right in here. You can just barely see it. You can see I probably tapped it a bit too close to the edge there. Um, that actually presses against the teeth up around here on the ratchet. And uh, that'll actually push it back into the pawl so it's nice and preloaded. You can see it on this assembled version. See, it springs right back. Um, little tip I'd sort of recommend is uh, using these spring plungers whenever possible. Springs are a really big pain in the butt to work with. I've got like a nice little hole in here to guide one and it, it still just, you know, wants to spring out all over the place. It doesn't want to apply force in a, in a straight line or anything. But these spring plungers, it's basically a set screw with a plunger on the end and the springs all inside. So really it's just sort of a short travel spring that you locate with a threaded hole. They work awesome. So now I would be putting this on. Unfortunately, the fit on here is still a bit tight. Rather than force it on like I did for this guy, I think I'm gonna file it to be a little bit better finish. Uh, I don't think the Okuma was outside dimension at all. I think it was my own, probably end mill deflection on the inside. Yeah, you see I kicked up some burrs in there trying to put it on. <laughs> so something I haven't mentioned before is these little holes on the back. These are actually for magnets. There's a corresponding slot going into the electronics compartment on these. And uh, I'm gonna put a Hall Effect sensor in here. So I'm gonna run this one full revolution and the Hall Effect sensor is gonna count the distance between the two magnets. And using that, it'll be able to figure out how many index positions are on the wheel, as well as where they are. So that's sort of a rudimentary homing routine. It's probably gonna have to do that every time it powers up, but I don't think it'll take very long. So why did I make two turrets? Well, the basic idea um, you'll see I, I actually made uh, this turret, this was the first turret for the lathe, uh, and it works fine. It doesn't spring back quite as dramatically as this one, which is definitely a, a problem, and it, you know, it doesn't look as nice and stuff. Um, but uh, the other thing is you can't do a whole lot on a lathe if you don't have the ability to bore. Um, so the idea with this guy is this is actually going to be for drills. So the plan is to use sort of a, a quarter inch spotting drill for, for the heavier stuff, <laughs> heavier, um, and just a little micro 100 boring bar. And then, you know, just sort of the regular fixins, like I'm going to have a sort of a 3 16 spotting drill and, and maybe a center drill and stuff like that. Uh, and this is actually going to sit a little bit behind. So if you're looking at the lathe cross slide like this, there you go. So it probably sits something like this with a little gap in the middle. And what this actually is going to allow is turning on the workpiece like this. And then when the cross slide moves back, that was the cross slide moving back. Then I'll be able to access the end and drill it and stuff. And this turret's not going to get in the way. So I'm sort of making use of, of the space I have, which hopefully is going to come in handy. 
Um, another question I get is why left hand, right hand? Uh, it's basically to accommodate the pawls. So the pawls have their whole little assembly in here. And if I want a workpiece to go down the middle of it, I can't have the pawls on the inside or else I'd lose all my space. So yeah. So I think I'm going to hold these drills in just with the uh, set screws or something. I'm not overly attached to this uh, drill rotor, to be honest. I don't really like the way it looks. And, uh, and also I, I, I sort of, uh, I did a bonehead move on uh, on the on the clocking of these ratchet teeth, so it's actually going to lock in sort of this position. So this tool is going to be a little bit lower, and that's because I wasn't thinking this has to lock a little lower because there's a there's a width offset, but there isn't in drills, obviously. So I may remake this. I may also accept this as the standard and mount this higher because it has to have space underneath it to clear this anyway. So we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I mean it's. You know, this is just a, a 36 mild steel, so I'm not, I won't be broken up if I have to make another one. This is actually made out of A2 tool steel. Uh, I tried really hard not to get this to scale. I put it in a nice little foil packet with paper in it and everything. But uh, the foil packet I used was actually a uh, half thou shim stock, which just vaporized at, at the 1700 Fahrenheit I had to bring this to. So... It scaled a bit. I surface ground it. Now it looks like I meant to do it, which is awesome. Um, I've mentioned a few times that I have to make wedges for this. So I actually made one today. And the idea with that is you put a wedge in like this. And then there's a fastener out here. You tighten that on. And that is super locked in. Like this doesn't pivot at all compared to the other ones. And you can also make different sized wedges for different shank sizes of tools. So this should allow me to go up to 3 eighths and, you know, maybe I can get some thin bit tools for grooving and parting and stuff. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's what all the details on the side of this turret were about anyways. And this guy I actually did harden too. I used my, my new induction heater that I'm going to make a video on soon, I think. Uh, man, that thing's a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, anyways, um, these designs I'm, you know, a lot happier with compared to the other one. There's still some issues that I'm thinking about resolving, but I'm certainly satisfied turret-wise for now. Um, there's sort of space in here for, for like, grease and uh, cutting oil and chips to get in, which would probably make it kind of grindy. Um, also, the, uh, the electronics, I kind of wish I left myself more space in here. Because this will fit a driver and nothing else. So I'm going to have one controller daisy chaining the two drivers together. And, you know, when it says tool 6, it'll move on, on turret number 1. And then as soon as it says tool 7, it'll know it's the other turret. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with this design. Um, had to change the whole pattern a bit. So I may have to remake the carriage. Surprise! <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm... Certainly looking forward to getting these on the lathe and trying them out. Just as a little teaser to my 100 subscriber video. What's that? Uh, not yet. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.